uh, the, uh, we talked about water and how it, uh, when it freezes, its density decreases. So ice floats. It's less dense. But especially, uh, and ice is less dense than any temperature water. But ice, when you heat it up, expands. As ice warms, it expands. It's like most things. Water, when it heats up, like most things, expands. But right in that regime, between like zero and eight degrees Celsius, uh, at four degrees Celsius, water is the most dense. And again, because of that open structure of ice. Ice forms those, the hex hexagons, takes up more space. That's why it's less dense. But when you get a mixture of those, and they can start collapsing, they're doing that, like if you're going from like zero degrees down to four, it's less dense, it takes up less space. But then the thermal motion of them pick, gaining energy and increasing their temperature, their average kinetic energy, they uh, start trying to expand, and that's winning out. Uh, and somebody asked, so I looked it up because I couldn't remember. They call this negative thermal expansion, where it doesn't go the direction you'd think. For example, water at four degrees C. If you take energy away from water at four degrees C, does it expand or contract? Four, water at four degrees C, and we're gonna take energy away from it. Will it expand or contract? It expands. What if you add energy to it? It expands. Yeah, that's not like expected. So things that do that are negative thermal expansion. And this uh, cubic zirconium tungstate, I told you they weren't normal. <laughs> that does it over a big temperature range. And then there are several other still just as non-familiar materials, but over narrow temperature ranges. Even water was over a narrow temperature range. But something I don't even know how to, what to call it. <laughs> uh, AM208. I don't know what the heck that is. Um, quartz and a number of zeolites also do it over certain temperature ranges. Fairly pure silicone has a negative coefficient of thermal expansion, goes the opposite direction you think. But again, over a nar fairly narrow temperature range. A rubber band is sort of the most similar thing I thought of. If you take a rubber band and stretch it, but it, it's not exactly the same, but the idea is you'd think if you'd stretch it, it's, it uh, would get bigger, but yet parts of it get thinner. And uh, if you touch it to your lip, you're pretty sensitive at detecting temperature differences here. And uh, most things, you know, if you heat it up, it expands. So if you expand it, its temperature should go up. The rubber band's different. Here's your, you can go home and try it. Take a rubber band, feel the temperature with your, with your lip, okay, and then like stretch it and feel it again. Do you think it'll get hotter or colder? And then, or vice versa. See, this is one you get to go home and verify yourself. It's different than most people think. So, go try it. Um, I also want to thank you very much. The, uh, they sent me an email from last, since last Monday, last Monday, Monday, uh, evaluations. And so I read all the wonderful comments, good and bad. Thank you. I learned from both. I'm taking them to heart, learned some things. Um, most of you appreciate the demonstrations. Well, that's good, because that's what this class is. I'll keep it up. Make sure I explain them well. Um, I think there was something. I wanted to specify, what was it? Oh, a uh, friendly reminder that not many of you have uh, felt the need, I guess, to uh, contact me outside of a few, some emails, but you, you're free to call or we come by. I'm, I live here 95% of the time. Just, I think only one of you has ever come to actually see me for help or anything. Um, we'll find a time that works for you. I'm pretty open. I told you at the beginning I don't have uh, specific office hours because I'm helping every other class and so I never know what they want each day to day. 
so I don't want to set them up and say, oh, sorry, I have to cancel this time. But I'm here, so if you need me. Um, in regards to notes, I uh, probably didn't specify well. I, I, I probably write on the board less than most teachers on campus. I, I do that consciously. Um, it's not to uh, annoy you. <laughs> um, I've noticed a lot of people, there is still a big chunk that haven't bothered even looking at the solutions to the homework. Um, I don't know how many people actually look at the solutions to the exam. I can't tell that. I know for a fact many of you don't have a textbook. That's fine. I understand that. Um, but many of you that do don't even read it or know very well. I could tell that by many, many questions that were asked on the last exam. Uh, basic stuff like, what is this? Really? Okay. We discussed it in lecture, but the book, like every section, talked about it and had pictures about it and explained it in depth over here and they didn't even know what it was. Um, so I, I do quest the types of questions I ask in class for clickers, the homework, I, I, since the first one tried to make them more specific so that it's more like what the test is like. Um, I, some, well, how do I want to say this? For, so you understand where, where I'm coming from. I fill the homework with your multiple submissions, make it a little easier, and that way you can learn instead of just oh, giving the answer, and then you have to wait to know if you're right or not. I like it gives immediate feedback. And you get a chance to submit again. Ah, OK, now I know the right answer. Or maybe you still missed it, but because there's only three, you, you now know what the right answer is. When the solutions come, they might give some extra. They, they do now. And uh, sorry, boy, I'm just not thinking straight. So that helps. They're like it. And the test. A lot of you have, have approached me and said, thank you. You seem to be getting it during lecture. Uh, and I feel that that's good. I'm, I'm explaining well. Can you explain it to your friend? Can you explain it to your mother? Can you do it on your own? Can you do, do the questions at the back of the book, the end of the chapter? And a lot of the odd answers are given in the back. Can you answer those? All the ones they ask during the, during the text, those are the keys. Can you answer those? Do you understand its solution, the answer to it? Do you think about this beyond the lecture? I know we have busy lives, but a lot of you can get a decent grade by just coming to lecture, listening to me, and learning stuff. That's great. Those that reflect upon it and try to apply it are going to get more out of this class and do better on the exams. That's what how, in my mind, exams test for that. Can you do it on your own? And, and in that regard, I want to emphasize again, while you're not in the stress moment, I do each test. If a test question is ever, you don't understand what I'm asking, or you think I'm trying to trick you, I'm really not, ask me. More than likely, I'll tell you, or at least cl try to clarify as best I can without giving you the answer. I, you, there's no reason for you to have to miss one because it confuses you. Well, do you mean this or this? Just ask me. And that was that, that was that, that was that. That's what I wanted to say about those. Do you guys have any questions that have been bothering you? Let's start with those. I had a problem with the homework assignment the other day. OK. Because um, one of the questions was about whether or not a good radiator is a good absorber or something like that. I'm so glad. I the answer in the book, but it used different vocabulary than the question. And I mean, I answered. Yeah, I think, let me find that one. A good absorber of radiation is, is that one the same? It was number 18, a good absorber. And before I get on this, I, you've probably realized I sign the homework as soon as I start the topics so that you have a chance to, to know what they are and listen to me and find them. You've got more time. Realize, though, I've just started teaching the topics. So there are, uh, you know, like this one. It was chapter 15 and 16. I'm yeah, I, I finished chapter 16 today. So there's some things I haven't even told you about in class. The book's there, yes, and that's what you're going off of, and I'll, I'll address this. The answer the book told you. Yeah. I'd love to see where you saw it in the book, because if that's wrong, yeah, I'll, 
fix that. But my, my overall point here is a lot of you, um, it's great that you start your homework early. I encourage that. You don't have to submit them, though, until near the due date. For example, there's, there's several questions on here I realize uh, I'm going to cover today. There's a handful of them that I haven't, I haven't talked about in class. And so it's perfectly fine if you wait to submit those until I discuss them. In regards to that one, though, let's cover it. A good absorber of radiation is a good emitter of radiation, a poor emitter of radiation, or a good reflector. And that's where I wanted to start today, too. We talked about heat transfer, and there's three main ways. What are they? Conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction's in contact. Most people are familiar with that. Convection is the, the substance itself by being heated moves, like in fluids. That generally makes sense to people. Radiation is the one that's probably a little less familiar, and that's what this lecture focuses on more. Anything that has a temperature radiates, electromagnetic waves. And so everything emits radiation. But also everything absorbs radiation. But the rates at which they do it depend on their temperatures and the material they're made out of. Things that are hotter, you probably can guess, radiate more. And, and things that are cold, vice versa. Um, so in that terminology, to clarify, absorber is it's taking it in. The light from the sun reaches you, and you can feel the warmth on your face. You're absorbing that radiation, and you've just increased your internal energy. And if that makes your molecules, on average, pick up their kinetic energy, then your temperature raises. Uh, just sitting here, though, you know if you go out in the snow, you're hotter than the snow, and you start emitting radiation. Just because you have a temperature, your molecules are moving around, and they emit an electromagnetic wave that goes away as radiation. That's, that's a form of heat transfer and you get colder. It's not because the cold comes to you, it's because your heat goes to the cold. Remember, hot to cold. So things in general that are, and that's the point of uh, this question and, and uh, second half of the, in the radiation part is, things that are good absorbers are also good emitters. And so for that question, I don't mind telling you, a good absorber of radiation is also a good emitter of radiation. A poor emitter is the opposite. And a good reflector, it talked about in here uh, reflecting light. Um, but I'm, please, if, if you've got an issue, show me and I, I'm, I'm open, okay? I can credit you back or something if justify it to me. No problem. So with that, let's try something. Let's do, no, no, let's start with black and white because you're familiar with that. If you go outside on a hot sunny day and you're wearing a black t-shirt versus you're wearing a white t-shirt, what do you observe? What was that? You get hotter in the black shirt. Do you, most of you tend to agree? Yeah, you're right. To specify, what that means is black is generally a better, is a better absorber of radiation. Excuse me. It, it takes it in. And you can relate to that because uh, visible light is what we're used to. And black absorbs all the light. None reflects off of it. And so we don't see. It looks black to us. Well, that's true outside of the visible spectrum as well. The electromagnetic waves. Let's show that. Not everybody's familiar, familiar with that. Oh, that one is... Wrong button. Okay, physics and spectrum. So up here, we have to pause and, and talk about waves for a moment, and it'll make more sense, I hope. Here's the visible spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's a tiny part of it. But each of the colors make it all up, and all of them together make white. Red over here has a longer wavelength. That's the distance between the waves. And blue and purple are over here where they're shorter. They have shorter waves. 
And shorter waves vibrate more quickly. They're going up and down faster. We say they have a higher frequency. So higher frequency, shorter wavelength, the distance between crests or bumps, if you will, is the wavelength. Frequency is the rate at which it's vibrating. High frequency, short wavelength. Low frequency, big wavelength. Invisible is in the middle. So infrared is a big one of heat. Infrared radiation, electromagnetic radiation, is where we feel a lot of our heat. Actually, our remote controls emit infrared. We can't see it, but it's in the infrared part of the spectrum. They're all waves. They just have different energies, different frequencies, different wavelengths. So to really drive this home, because we will not be covering sound waves this semester. We don't have time to cover everything. Will you help me, Brandon? Yep. Get you on the front row here. It's the same with any type of wave, this relationship between wavelength and frequency. So if Brandon sends over there, I can send a pulse, and it travels back and forth and reflects. But if it's going at a certain frequency, let's see, you can hold still, Brandon, like that. They're going that way, and they reflect back, and you see this wave. There's two bumps. Two bumps form one wavelength. So the wavelength distance is the distance between me and Brandon. And you can see it's a large wave, relatively speaking. And you can see how fast it's vibrating. Up, 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 up. That rate is the frequency. So now I'm going to pause. And I'll let Brandon, you vibrate quickly. You can see there's more bumps. So the wavelength just got shorter. And he's vibrating more quickly. So that wave's a lot shorter, and you can see it's going around a lot faster, too. It can go in a circle. So the relationship between wavelength. The bigger the wavelength, the more slowly it's vibrating. And the faster it's vibrating, the shorter the wavelength. That's true in sound waves, any type of waves. That's the relationship. Thanks, Brandon. So it's the same with electromagnetic waves. And so blue side of the spectrum is vibrating more quickly, has a higher frequency. Blue light is emitted from something that's hotter. The hotter something is, the more it shifts in the spectrum. A blue laser can read more data than a red laser. Yes, because the blue wavelength is shorter, and so we've increased the resolution. Yes, absolutely. Exactly right. So uh, if you get something like uh, a light bulb, you send electricity through the filament, it glows. Just because of its temperature alone, it glows. It's giving off thermal radiation, and a lot of it in the infrared. If you increase its temperature, you can start to see it. It'll glow red, maybe it's orange. If you get it even hotter, it might be glowing white as it's mixing, getting more into here and getting all of in the spectrum. And you get it even hotter, this applies to stars too, it, it might look more blue. We have blue stars. They're hotter than red stars. They're hotter than white stars because white would be all of them. Blue would be over here. It's more energy there. You can keep going. Some lamps can even emit some ultraviolet light if they're hot enough. We can't see it, but it's there. I'm going to help you see this a little bit. I'll keep blabbering while these are some diffraction grading glasses. We'll use these for this class and then return them. Pass them around. Just take one. And once they're all passed out, we'll, I'll do a demo on it. Go ahead and get your... Uh, uh, no, never mind, forget that. Let's do. I'll wait for those to move around. While they're being passed out, convection, something I wanted to emphasize, I didn't as much last time. When we talked about hot air rising because it gets less dense, when hot air goes up, what is the pressure it feels? How does it change when hot air goes up? Say that again. Increases as it goes, decreases as it goes up. Yes, because as you get higher in the atmosphere, 
there's less pressure. And so those, those hot molecules that are moving around trying to get away from each other because they got lots of energy, they're trying to expand. The pressure, atmospheric pressure of the surrounding gas is trying to keep them contained. As you go up, that pressure decreases and so they can expand. And when they expand, do you think they speed up or slow down? As the molecules expand, do you think that their speed gets faster or slows down? It slows down because they don't run into each other, each other as much. And in general, they're moving out. Remember a collision, two, two billiard balls, my fists. And if they're both moving like this and this one's expanding and it runs into this one, this one picks up a little, but this one slows down. And then in general, most of them are expanding and on average, they slow down. So its temperature decreases and it cools. Cool air is more dense, it starts to sink. And that's a convection flow. But it's also how our climate works. Differences in temperature can drive the, the, the winds. Differences in pressure can move them away and around. The next, the end of this chapter, actually, it kind of touches on climate for this chapter and the next chapter. But I wanted to emphasize that. Uh, you can do it with this while you're still passing them out. This is just a two liter bottle and I've covered it with liquid crystal temperature strip, liquid crystals. They change their orientation and how they absorb and reflect visible light based on their orientation. Their orientation changes with temperature. So right now it's black and if this heats up, it'll change colors. So I am going to attach it to a bicycle pump and we'll, be, we'll be revisit this in later chapters, but you can understand it now. I'm going to pump air into it and compress the air. So this time instead of making it expand, I'm going to force it all together. What do you expect the temperature to do, increase or decrease? Increase. They're in there getting shoved together, they're going to run into each other more. Or think of it in terms of energy. I have to do work here as you'll see. Where's that energy going? To move these molecules around and force them into there and compress them. And so the internal energy of the fluid inside there should be increasing and it's starting to change right now. The temperature just went up. It just was red, now it's kind of green, it's starting to turn a little blue and I'm getting tired. Good enough. And you can feel it. You've probably done this. You went, oh yeah. Or you pipe, pumped up your bicycle tire. You can feel the warmth. It's because you're compressing the air. Or in other words, you're doing work to put energy into the system. That's thermodynamics. That's chapter 18. We're not there yet. <laughs> but, but it makes sense. If I release the air, watch what happens to the liquid crystal and the air inside. Ready? cold air, I can feel it, and the air is allowed to expand, it cools, the temperature dropped, and what did you notice inside the bottle? A little bit. Yeah, it fogs up, because the gas that was in there, the water vapor specifically, was in vapor form, gas form, it condensed and turned back into a liquid. And that's the next chapter as well. So it's, it's all starting to come together. Okay. Yeah, Kate. I have a question about pressure. There, when you talk about barometric pressure, it's about the same kind of thing, right? Barometric pressure, yeah. Children research. Right. This was in some child development literature that the barometric pressure a teacher can actually lower the barometric pressure. Interesting. 
So re re I'm repeating for the camera too. Interesting. So research has shown barometric pressure changes affect people's moods. Yeah. And generally when it's higher, they tend to be happier? Yes. It affects their moods, and teachers can see that in their students? Yes. Let's see. Is the barometric pressure higher or low today by how irritated you guys are? Um, or, or I can't... Changing. The change? Also, uh, yeah. I'll attempt to put some explanations on it, but there's more than physics going on there, so I don't know the full answer. That's, that's interesting. When the pressure increases, your knees kill you. That, you know, if somebody goes, oh, I got a you know, trick elbow or something, here's just a knee. Because when you have changes in pressure, the pressure is changing on you, and it can affect the temperature and the humidity in the, in the air, and it's these climate changes, well, sure, it can physiologically be making a change in you as well. And generally, where people had injuries or something, something happens, and I don't know what it is. They can tell. They can. They're, they're not making that up. And that's how weathermen predict storms. They can tell if a pressure front is coming in or not, whether it increases or decreases, because in terms of physics, that tells you, oh, if the pressure drops, that's like releasing the air. Then the, the, the gas can expand and it will cool. Well, that'll drop the temperature, you know, and that affects things, and vice versa. And so I, all I can say is there's some physiological effects going on that must affect our attitude. In general, higher pressure has, is associated with warm, sunny weather, where we are generally happier, and vice versa. So that could have something to do with it as well. Well, if you haven't learned anything in this class, I hope your change is very important. Inertia keeps going. You want to make a change, you've got to do something, and that change is what we've always focused on. Heat transfer, change, doing work, moving energy from kinetic to potential, you've got to do something. It's, it's a lot of change. This world is, is rarely static. And now you know the particles in this wood are always moving. They're always changing in the motion. They will, if they came to an absolute stop, I don't know what would happen because nobody's seen it yet. But what would be its temperature? Zero Kelvin. Very good. Nobody's gotten there yet. <laughs> so don your glasses and let's see some uh, change in a light bulb. Uh, these are diffraction gratings and they split the white light that you're seeing there, the reddish light, into its constituent colors. What colors do you see? Red, green, yellow, orange. Anybody see much blue? Good, that's my point. This is, I don't have it turned on very high. And so it's not as hot as it can be. To your naked eye, without your glasses, it looks kind of reddish orange. That's the wavelengths it's emitting. The peak wavelengths, the peak frequency that it emits is in the red region. Because, and that tells you its temperature. We could measure the peak wavelength from this and get its temperature. There's a formula. If I crank it up and send more electricity through it, look at it. What, what color starts appearing? The blue, because now it's, more of the particles in there are hotter, have a higher temperature, and so they radiate a higher peak frequency, the blue. Notice it still radiates red. Some of them are still just as cool, so to speak, but there's a lot more hotter ones. If that's good English, I don't know. <laughs> Woo! And you can see without your glasses, the filament is white. It's less red because there's more blue mixed in with the, the, the spectrum. I'll turn it back down again and we can watch the blue disappear. Yeah, it it's, takes a while to cool, of course, but yeah, there's a whole lot less blue in the spectrum. So all things radiate, and it's based on their temperature. The hotter it is, the higher frequency, shorter wavelength it emits. And that light contains more energy, literally. 
Now, since you have glasses, check out the lights above you. Those are fun. You can tell a little bit about their temperature from them. I can see all the whole spectrum, blue, so they're pretty hot. They should be. They're 300 watt bulbs, but it's the same thing. Electricity's running through a current, or a filament in those, and just because it gets hot, it radiates thermal energy, and we can see that in the visible spectrum. There'd be a lot of infrared from that as well, but we can't see that. All right. If all, oh, well, we'll play the reverse game. Here we go. Where are we at? If you're curious, the formula to figure all this out, so frequency is proportional to temperature. It, uh, it's actually proportional to temperature to the fourth power. So it's not a linear thing, but the, uh, the amount of heat that's involved with it comes out. And that's how we know how hot stars are. We can gauge, measure the wavelengths of light coming to us and can tell what it's made up of by splitting it up into the various colors, but also where the peak frequency is. And that's why we have red stars and orange stars and blue, and that's what it tells us. So, now that we know things radiate and that they absorb, if you have something and its temperature is not changing, what does that mean about its radiation? Is it radiating? Yeah, we just said, it, it is unless, unless it's zero Kelvin, it's radiating. So we have some radiation coming off. So why doesn't it just cool until it gets to zero Kelvin? It's absorbing as well. And this one must be absorbing the exact same amount. It's that net game again. Remember net force and net energy? Energy must be conserved. That's the whole basis of thermodynamics. And so the ends equal the out if the temperature is not changing. And this will emit um, a constant peak frequency that we can observe. So if you uh, have one that comes in, does the temperature increase or decrease? Do you see that? Yeah, it increases in that case. So this, we would say, is a net absorber. It's absorbing more than, than it's emitting or radiating. And if you put something over this, like oh, what, normal light, say tin foil, you cover it with tin foil, it's going to reflect a lot of that light, isn't it? Oh, that one missed. <laughs> and so something that's a good reflector is a poor absorber because it's not taking it in. It's just diverting it away. So that things that are white, which they're white because they reflect the visible light, they also reflect a lot of infrared. And so they're good reflectors. They're poor absorbers. They're also poor radiators, emitters. Black, though, is a good absorber and a good emitter. So that back to that black t-shirt, you get hotter because it, abs it absorbs energy better than white or more quickly. White will eventually get to the same temperature. You just have to apply more heat to it. Black will have its, its temperature change faster. And so yeah, you, that's why you feel hotter more quickly with wearing something that's black. However, take both of those. OK, you're in your black t-shirt and your friend in the white t-shirt, and you're out there all day. Well, eventually the white's going to get up to a hot temperature as well. And you go inside. Who's going to cool off more quickly, black t-shirt or white t-shirt? Black, because it will emit the radiation more quickly as well. Good absorbers are good <laughs> emitters. Poor absorbers are poor emitters. And if it wasn't that way, we wouldn't have things in thermal equilibrium. Because if something was a good absorber and a poor emitter, what would happen to its temperature? Good absorber, poor emitter. Its temperature would just keep going up and 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 up forever, and we don't see that in real life. And vice versa. If you wore light colored clothes, would it help you stay warmer? Once you got warm, it would take you longer to get warmer, but something that's white would stay 
at a higher temperature longer, all else being the same. Just due to radiation, absolutely. Look at these boxes. They have holes into them. And here we can turn them a little so you can both see. The point is, what color is that hole? Yeah, it's black. And if you can't see with a little switch, got two boxes. It's black. And one of them I put other things on, other black. Which to you looks the darkest, blackest? The one on the outside? This one? To you? Okay, Any other, anybody else? It's kind of my point, it's hard to tell. A lot of you said middle. You're welcome to come up closer where maybe the light's a little better for you. Most people I ask think the middle is blacker. I just got them out of different materials, and this one's just a hole. I know you can't all see, but I'll get a little closer for some of you to see. I don't know if you can, which, does that change your mind, which hole you think looks darker? It's kind of subjective. Everybody see, thinks a little differently, but those of you who've seen it up close, what do you think? The middle, was it? What do you think now? I don't know. Does it change for you when you're close? Well, here's the, the fun part. This one, the inside, is white. This is in your book. Uh, and that one's black. But they both look black. And the idea here is what we call a black body. Uh, when it goes like this, this is at a certain temperature. How do you think this guy's temperature compares to this guy's? They're the same. Because these have been in the room a long time. They've come into thermal equilibrium with the room temperature. They're at room temperature. The black one got there more quickly. But they're, 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 they're there now. So if they're the same temperature, they have the same peak radiation. They emit the same light. We can't see. And this region, they're not that hot, so it's in the infrared. And all the, if when I close it, it's absorbing radiation. It's not changing this temperature. Light can come in, but it just gets absorbed inside. And what comes out is black. It's the same for both of them. And it doesn't matter that one's white or the other. They're at the same temperature. I'm trying to emphasize that. And if something's relatively cool, it doesn't emit hardly any visible light at all. It's all in the infrared. And that's why, to me, the middle looks blacker than any th material we have that's black. And that's the point of a black body. I think uh, there was a homework question about the pupil of the eye. Why does it look black? Because it's, it's like this. Light comes in, gets absorbed. Would you say these boxes and your eye is a net absorber or a net radiator? Net absorber, because it, it looks black, because we're not seeing the light. Um, these two demos are just another way of showing radiation. To emphasize again, it does not need a medium. You do not need the air in the room. There's a solar panel on the back of this, and it can convert radiant energy, light, into electrical energy runs a little motor. So if I aim it on it, you can see it start to spin. That's a solar cell or a solar panel. But it's because of the radiation from this getting absorbed by the solar cells. This is called a radiometer. How many have seen one of these before? A few of you? It's in an evacuated chamber, so the pressure inside is a lot less. It's just to remove a lot of the air. But it's not completely removed. One side of the vein's painted black and the other side's painted white. If I shine light on it and it absorbs radiant energy through heat transfer of radiation, which way will it turn? Will the black side trail or the white side trail? The black side is trailing. The white side, it's moving in the direction of the white side. So again, as long as something's hot, you can feel this. I can feel the radiant energy on my face. The hotter your light source, 
the more effective this is. You can put it in your windowsill and the radiation from the sun will make it turn. So what's happening is the black side, they're both absorbing energy, but the black heats up faster, right? It's a better absorber. And so it gets to a higher temperature. So the, what little air molecules are in there, the ones near the black face are hotter. And temperature is a measure of? Average translational kinetic energy. So they're moving around with greater speed. And not only is black a greater, better absorber, it's a better emitter. And so it, they rebound off of the black side with more energy than they rebound off the white side because they're hotter. And remember recoiling from conservation of momentum and energy? You shoot a gun, the bullet goes out, but this gets kicked back. The vein gets kicked back when those hot moving molecules, hotter moving molecules on the black side get, get kicked away. And that pushes the black side around and turns it. Does that make sense? But it's all because of this heat transfer and ultimately from radiation. Review your three. Why do we use a thermos like this to keep our hot chocolate or coffee or soup warm? Tell me how this would help with conduction. It's a poor conductor? Very good, yeah. These type of thermoses have a space in the walls. And so the outer wall is not touching the inner wall in order to get, except for up here, a little, little bit. So it has to get through usually air. Or sometimes they evacuate it. Or you can fill it full of some inert noble gas, but that's more expensive. And the air is a poor conductor of heat. And so the heat in the liquid, the energy in the liquid, the heat is not transferred as quickly through the air. Very good for conduction. So you can hold on to it, and heat doesn't flow between your hand and the liquid because there's that insulating layer. How about convection? Yeah, there's less conduction through it, so that limits, if it's not move, can't move that way, it won't convect that way. How about the air above it? Exactly. Best way to stop convection, put a lid on it. Because it'll heat up, right, the, the air above the liquid level. Remember, they're moving around, they're hot. And they'll bump into the air molecules, and the ones right next to it will gain energy. And uh, periodically, one of the liquid ones will jump out with enough energy that, oh, it escapes the liquid. It just evaporated. That's next chapter. Changed phase. That cools the liquid down, but now it's free. Well, if it can't rise out and bring cold air back in through a convective airflow, it won't keep taking energy away. You trap it. And now convection can only happen right here. And it can warm that up, but that heat doesn't leave continually. Does that make sense? And how about radiation? You can do it. Come on. Because it's black on the inside, so that absorbs the, the radiation and keeps it within the cup. It does absorb. Did you want it to, the heat to go to the cup? No, but it also radiates. It also radiates this. Yes. What other color is this? Silver. Is that a good absorber? It's a good reflector, so that makes it a poor absorber. And so any hot material inside, if it radiates out, not conduction or convection, it's radiation, it gets reflected back in. It's in it keeps it in the cup. And all of this is true for reverse, too. You put ice cream in here. Heat wants to flow from hot to cold. We've been talking about moving outward. Heat trying to move in, same things. You've, you've kind of sheltered it. And so it'll stay colder, things will stay colder in here as, longer as well. That's a thermos. And a good thermos uh, affects all three of those. All right. A few clicker questions and we'll let you go. Oh, great. The projector just turned off, didn't it? <laughs> While the uh, projector is on shutdown mode, 
you can get your clickers out. I'll get the question ready. Um, the greenhouse effect. While we wait. That, it, how many have, have never heard of the greenhouse effect? That's what I thought. That idea is that radiation comes from the sun. It's hot. And so it's got a higher frequency, shorter wavelength. It can make it through our atmosphere. It can make it through glass windows. It can make it into your car, into your greenhouse. What's it do? The things inside absorb. The earth absorbs. Your, your vinyl, your pet Fido in, that you left in your car at Walmart. Shame on you. Absorbs that energy, gets hot, and radiates its own energy, right? Is it as hot as the sun? Probably not. So it radiates less frequency, lower frequency radiation, longer wavelengths. They can't make it back out. They get reflected by the atmosphere or the glass. And so now they're trapped, and your car, and the greenhouse, and the earth can get warmer if that net is out of balance, if it's absorbing now more than it can radiate. That's the greenhouse effect, and it can make things warmer. And so that's why if you left Fido in there, or your kid, they're going to get extremely hot. And it's amazing the increase in temperature difference when it's closed off. Because you've, you've put a lid on it. Convection can't cool it off. And radiation can't get out. And so it's absorbing a lot more thermal energy than it's radiating. All right. Does that make sense? The greenhouse effect. All right. Polling open. Firewalkers, people that walk barefoot, this is explained in your book, they walk across uh, wood coals. Whether you're familiar with it or not, you should be able to answer this. In order to not burn them, well, what's the key here? Is it because the wood is a poor conductor, good conductor, convection, or low specific heat capacity? The idea here is the coals are hot. You don't want to burn your foot. What can limit heat transfer from the hot coals to your foot? And make it bearable. Shoes. <laughs> That's answer E. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and. Overwhelmingly, 73%. Oh, we did get an answer, F. That was good. Uh, a, most of you thought A. Very good. It is. It's poor conduction. Wood is a poor conductor. And so even though it's really hot, if you don't dwell on it and stay, and stay put, then it doesn't have much time to transfer the heat through conduction. If you stood there long enough, it would. Okay, go. Which of these emits ra radiant energy? Sun or the Earth? Neither or both. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Ooh, we're split. 38% A and 56% think both. Does the sun have a temperature? Yes. So it emits. Does the earth? Yes. So they both radiate. Not the same frequency, but they both radiate. Because they have a temperature. There was one more in here I want. Yeah, this one. Go. Heat comes from the sun to earth by which process? Boy, I hope you get this one. Or I'm going to feel bad. For me. How does heat get here from the sun? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, one person left, 2, eh, you lose. Okay, you got it right. Radiation. Have a great day, guys.